Hello. I've been reading the comments and a lot of you guys seem to have very specific things that you want me to script. I've decided to go ahead and script a couple of them. I'm going to be very brief on explanations, just going to give an overview of the stuff. But I still think it'll be insightful. I still think it'll be helpful. I still think it'll be interesting. Uh, I'd, I'd even go as far as to say intriguing. Okay, I need to shut the f*** up and just... Okay. The first scripting suggestion that I received is... How do you make it so that when the part grows to about 10 studs, it changes color slash deletes itself? This is a pretty easy one. It's good to start with. Uh, as you can see in this local script that I made here... Why is it a local script? Uh... I have exact counter Sorry guys, but you just said nonsense. Why would you use tweens on Why the hell did you Why the heck would you absolutely demolish the network? I have a bomb! I have a bomb! No, I'm lying. I actually wrote that last one. I'm about to bomb this whole Guys, it really doesn't matter that much. There's not really a better way to do things over the other, it just depends on what your goal with the script is. If you want less strain on the server, then use local scripts. But if you do that, that means that the tween might be out of sync with other players. If you want my take on it, I only use tweens on the server when I absolutely have to. In all of the games that I've worked on, I use local scripts for pretty much everything. Unless there's a reason to, I just stick to the client. But again, this is different for every person in every game. Okay, now that we've gone through that, as I was saying, I have this model here that I'm going to tween. I'm going to go ahead and open this local script that I've made. Two things here. You can't tween the properties of models directly. I think I said this in my tweening models video. What you have to do instead are create instances of number values and C-frame values. We tween these values and then we update the model's position or scale or whatever it is that we're trying to update. Another important thing to note is that I have the amount to scale up here. This will make it 10 times its original size. So this creates a scale tween, this creates a C-frame tween. I had the C-frame tween here because I don't want it to go into the floor. I know you're gonna ask about this, I don't know what the f*** is going on here, I just put in numbers and it worked, so I, I'm just gonna leave it. We check whenever the values change and update the model position or the model scale. You could also do this with the dot changed event, but it was really inconsistent for me, so I just used get property changed signal. This will work 100% of the time, hopefully. We then use one of the completed events of our tweens to run the rest of our code. We want to destroy both of the values that we parented to the script. This is just to remove unnecessary instances. Then we loop through the model and change the color. I thought it might look weird if every single part in this model turned white. So I have a part named face in the model and the color of just that part is going to change. Then we wait five seconds and then we destroy it. See what it looks like in game. Okay, it grows to 10 times its size turns white. Go white boy, go! And then it destroys. Nice. Okay, moving on. How do I make it so whenever I right click with the tool, then the event will be fired? Right click to use tool. This can be a little bit complicated, especially since Roblox comes with a built-in function for left clicking on tools. You could probably see it when I played the game, but I have this tool in the starter pack, and I have this script here. For reference, this is the code that's required to make a tool left click. Unfortunately, right-clicking looks a little bit more complicated, <laughs> but it's not so bad once you understand what's going on. You want to use Context Action Service. This is the service to use if you want to make custom keybinds for your game. It has a method called Bind Action. This is the name of the action. This is the code that it's going to execute once it starts. It comes with these three parameters. This input state one here is uh, the one that I used. It's most important. This checks whether the button that was pressed on your keyboard or controller or mouse or whatever just began or is ended. Here I only check to see if it's begun and if it has then it right clicks. If I didn't check to see if this began then it would fire two times. It would fire when I initially held the mouse down and when I let go of the mouse. After that it asks to create a touch button. This is for mobile players who don't have access to a keyboard. It'll create a little button GUI on their uh, phone screen. And then the remaining parameters are just all of the keybinds that you want. So obviously we want to right click with this. And I also allowed console players to press the B button. You can just add whatever else you want, but like if I wanted K or something, I would just do uh, enum.keycode.k. Ignore that it's erroring, it's just formatting. We bind this when the tool is equipped, and when the tool is unequipped, we need to unbind it. This is so that you can't right-click when the tool isn't active. Okay, we will play the game again. Oh, I forgot to disable that. Alright, well. Go, white boy, go! Have this tool. 
Can right click with it. Fantastic. Put it away. As hard as I may try, I cannot right click with it. If I equip the tool again, there we go. Okay, next comment. Can you make it like teleport a model via button? This other person replied to them and said, yes, I think so. Not sure, maybe using C-Frame. This person is very smart. Uh, the commenter didn't specify whether or not it had to be a physical button, so I just took the really easy route and went with the GUI button. When we push this, it should... <laughs> this is really not that complicated. All models have the method pivot to, and then you give it a C-frame, and it'll bring the model to that destination. Since my character is a pivot... <laughs> since my character is a model, this works. Next suggestion. Can you make a video on how to make a player move along with a part? I've been stuck on it in my game for like hours. This one's a little bit more interesting. Each of these sets of platforms has a folder uh, with a first and second part. The platform will start at this part and then go over to the second part and then go back to the first and then just do that over and over again. This moving platform here, if I try to jump on it, <laughs> it refuses to take me with it. I feel like Michael Jackson right now. That was a stupid yes, joke. Now the reason it's not letting me stay on it is because we're tweening the part. When you tween a part's position, you are just tweening the position. Not to get too physics-y, but there is a concept known as velocity, and everything that's on the platform has to be inheriting the same velocity that the platform has. So if you are just adjusting the position, the position is going to update, but the velocity isn't. Velocity affects position, but changing the position doesn't affect the velocity, if that makes sense. The way to get around this is by using body positions. Now... Why don't I, it, okay, it rejected me. That's fine. I'm used to getting rejected. You know, that's fine. You know, that's... Oh, it did it, it, did it again. F*** the stupid platform. Now when I try to jump on this platform, it actually takes me with it. No way. Oh my goodness. A couple of things before we go into the code. I recommend using a local script for this one, because if you're using a server script, the movement of the platform is probably going to be very choppy. You want to make sure that the moving platform is underneath the script, and you also want to make sure that the moving platform is not anchored. Underneath the moving platform, you need two things. You need a body position, and you need a body gyro. For the body position, copy these three properties. Don't worry about the position. We changed that in the script. And then for the body gyro, copy these things. If you don't have the body gyro, then the platform is going to freak out and try to spin everywhere and like, you don't want that. Then, you want to make sure that these two points here are can collide false. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we will look at the script. Instead of tweening the part, we tween the body position. So we clone the part underneath the script and bring it into workspace. Set the body position's position to the first part's position. I hope that made sense. And then you also want to set the part's position to the first part's position. I also hope that made sense. After you've done that, create a tween with the body position and make the tween for the position of the body position the second part's position. I am so sorry. I hope that made sense. Make sure your tween is looping and it reverses. And well, as you saw, it should work perfectly fine. Let's do another one. How do I make a play a cutscene when I use the tool? I think it's too much for me to cover right now in this one video. If you'd like a cutscene tutorial, just let me know. We have time for one more question. Hey, how to get GF? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I wrote this one as well.